Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3D Pay, and today I'm going to talk about configure and install Marlin onto a 3D printer. Here recently I've gotten several comments uh, from people via YouTube that they need some help either configuring Marlin or getting it installed. So I thought maybe it'd be helpful to, to print, uh, to create my own take on how to set up Marlin. Now, in the past, I've done a video about how to manage your Marlin configurations with GitHub, and I'll put a link to, the, to that op. So you want to take a look at that and use that video and this video together. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and open up uh, GitHub Desktop. I've gone ahead and opened up GitHub Desktop, and you'll notice up here in the left-hand corner, my current repository is Marlin. And I've gone ahead and changed my current branch over to a bug fix uh, 2.1.x. And I'm going to go ahead and hit fetch upstream just to make sure that I have all the current changes. So that way, this is totally up to date as of this moment. Um, next step I'm going to do is real quickly, I'm going to go over here to hit branch. I'm going to hit new branch. And I'm going to call this er, three dash neo and i'm going to be using the big tree tech mini it's kr3 so i think i have that all right let me add another dash in here so it's a little clear skr3 version 3. okay so i have all that i'm going to create a branch and that's going to create a branch and switch over um, to that as my current branch now since i already have this on my github repository and i want to be able to share this with other users I'm just going to hit publish, publish online. So now I've just published it. So this is available via my GitHub repository. And I'm going to go ahead and switch over and show you that real quick, just so you can see it. So right now, um, over in my GitHub repository, and that's the minimal 3DP slash Marlin. So this is a fork of Marlin. What I can do is let's take a look at this. Right now, I'm on the main branch. And I can go over here. And here's the branch I just created. So I'll switch over to that. And right now, no change has been made. So we're just gonna leave that as is. Now I've gone ahead and switched over to VS Code. And I have VS Codes open. And I wanna just point out a couple different things here. I have, in order to follow along with me, you probably need three different extensions and starter plugins for VS Code. And you can go over here and install these various plugins. What I would recommend is project management, you're going to need platform IO in order to compile the firmware. And then lastly, I'd also do auto build Marl. And I find that's really helpful because it, it pretty much does everything uh, for you. It has some functions to clean up previous installs. So I go ahead and install those three. So those three are project management, platform IO, auto build Marl. And I'll, I'll put those in the video description as well as I'm also trying to post on my website some, some additional instructions. So I'll put them over there. And all those URLs, again, will be in the video description. I already have a project loaded in the project management for Marlin. Click on it. It's going to say I'm missing a file, and that's because I'm on a new branch. So let's go ahead and fix things right now. So I'm going to go up to here to File and hit Add Folder to Workspace. And so I'm going to go to where I have my code stored. And I just stored in a code folder. And this is all my various repos that I use. Find Marlin. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. I've clicked on the Marlin folder. And there we go. Everything's right here. And this has gone ahead and loaded the auto build Marlin. Don't need that right now. Let's go ahead and we're going to make some changes here. The first thing we want to do is I'm going to say uh, save workspace as. So let's go ahead and save this. And I'm just going to leave it at the default name Marlin. Hit save. And then if I go back over here to project management, I can open it back up. So that way it's just everything's consistent. So now I've made my first change. To, to uh, configure this further, let's go up here to terminal and hit new terminal. So now we have a terminal window uh, down the bottom here. That might take a minute to load. Now I have a fancy terminal, but you should have down here. Let's just go ahead and hit Git. 
status. And get status will show me that I'm on my Neo branch and I have this new file in here, this marlin.code workspace. Now let's go ahead and just save that. So let's do git add dot. So that's adding it. And then I'm gonna do git commit minus a minus m. I'm just gonna say added workspace and single quotation, hit enter. And so that's going ahead and create that commit. And then let's just do git push. So this will send it up to GitHub. And there we go. That's set to GitHub. And if I hit git status again, it should say, yep, everything's up to date. So I'm good to go. So let's go ahead and start configuring things to get this all set up appropriately. Now, one of the users that asked me a question was struggling to get uh, their Ender 3 Neo configured to use the Big Tree Tech board. So, what I'm going to do is here's the um, criteria they sent me, what, what's on their printer. And so, let's go ahead and configure this printer or um, configure Marlin to match this printer. So let's go ahead and open up some reference windows so we can take a look at how the Big Tree Tech board needs to be set up. So I've gone ahead and switched over to the Big Tree Tech SKR Mini E3 uh, GitHub page. So I'm going to click firmware here. Then I'm going to go down here to the version 3.0.1 board. And let's open that up and go to Marlin and we'll see how we need to configure that to make it all work. And let's go ahead and switch over to here too. So here's the actual configuration for this board. So let's start by configuring platform io.ini. So I'm gonna open this up and here is the board right here. So I'm gonna copy that. So I've copied that board and then I'm just gonna switch back over to VS Code, and I'm going to go to the platform io.ini file, and then just paste that board in. So that way I'm using the correct board and the correct configuration. So I have that in there. Let's go ahead and save that file. So we've now configured this appropriately. Next, let's go ahead and make our configuration changes we go into the Marlin folder, we're gonna to have to make some changes to the configuration.h and the configuration underscore advanced.h files. And so let's go ahead and make those. Now I've switched back over to the Big Tree Tech GitHub repo, and I'm gonna use that as my references. Now I'm gonna apologize because I'm gonna wind up jumping back and forth here a little bit. I don't have the Neo on hand. So basically what I'm, I'm gonna have to do is probably try to configure the firmware and then I, I might have to look up some stuff if it doesn't compile correctly. So this may be a little bit, again, more in depth. Okay, so I've opened both files up. I have the configuration.h file open on the right-hand side, and this is from Big Tree Tech on their GitHub. And then I have my copy of VS Code open on the left. And what I basically do is just start scrolling down and looking at these configurations. So I'm just gonna scroll down and I'm gonna copy the author string and paste that over here. I'll put me as the author here. I'm slowly scrolling down here. And one of the first changes I see is on the right-hand side, I need to change the mother. So I'm gonna copy that and then paste it right over this value. So we have that. And then serial port is two for Big Tree Tech. So we're gonna go ahead and change that in mind to the baud rate is different. So we're gonna change that to 115200. Let's go ahead and uncomment out serial port two. So we've uncommented that out and that matches over here. Let's go ahead and add a custom printer name. So we're gonna do Again, so this way the user can check things. We're going to call this Ender 3 Neo, 
and I'm going to call it version 2.1.001. And this is pretty much my, well, let's change this. So let's do 0.01B. What I'm telling myself is this is my first version right here, and I'm on bug fix because I want to make sure that's noted. So now let's keep scrolling down here. First problem I'm noticing is we have, um, this is an older version of bug fix that Big Tree Techs use, and so that's a bit of a problem. So we're gonna have to skip around a little bit. So I'm gonna keep scrolling down here till I find the TMC drivers. I can't remember offhand what this board is using. It's been a while since so I configured it myself. So let's just scroll down. Ah, so it's doing the TMC. 209. So let's copy that. And then we're just going to overwrite these here. So I'm going to go over the text file that the user sent me. And they're using a dual Z. Now, if I remember correctly, there's really only four or steppers on this board. So although we'll have dual Z, they're both going to be run off the same stepper. Um, the Z is going to share a stepper. So we're just going to uh, leave this as is. So I'm running both Z steppers off the same stepper motor. So now I want to scroll back up here to the top in the big tree tech, and then I'm going to keep scrolling down here. So let me figure out, make sure I'm on the same spot here. Okay, so there's the axis. One extruder, 1.75, that all looks good. So we're just going to keep scrolling down here and making sure everything looks good. Now, as I mentioned, we'll probably go back because as I'm, I'm going to make some changes to optimize the screen for, for the user as well. So let's keep scrolling down here. I get the round line. So now I'm pretty much at the same spot. So now we're down to thermal settings. The only thing we should need to do is the bed temp sensor, the bed temp sensor for the bed. So I'm leaving this at one for the temp sensor for the extruder. I'm leaving the temp sensor temp sensor for the bed at one. And then I'm leaving the thermistors down here all the same. So we're all good to go. And then I'm just going to compare these numbers back and forth just to make sure we're, so that's 10, 1, 3, 10, 10, 1, 3, 10, 1, and 3. Yeah, that's all looking the same. Like I said, I'm just slowly but surely scrolling down here, comparing the two. And I'll probably go over and look at the Neo uh, board, the default board, and see what that looks like as well, just to make sure I have all the temperature sensors correct. I think it's a little harder to do this without actually having the board here. So now the PID temp is defined, so that's good. I'm gonna keep scrolling here. Go ahead and define the PID temp bed. So we need to comment that. It's bed power 255, that looks good. Now, user is gonna to have to run a, uh, is gonna to have to do the PID tuning. So I don't know what the values are right off the bat. I'm not going to worry about it. That's something he'll have to do. But I'll, I'll go ahead and let him know that. And if he watches the video, hopefully he'll see that he has to go ahead and do that as well. Make some recommendations on the tools I use to configure. So cold extrusions 170. That's okay. Man, like the extrusion, it's set at 200 right now. The recommended over here 600. So we're just going to change that. I don't think it's going to make a difference, but. Now, I don't know if this user has a chamber, so we're just going to leave the thermal protections for the chamber on. I normally don't. No, that's why I turn off the cooler, but I'll just leave those on. It's not going to hurt anything. So now what I'm doing is I think we're a little out of sync again, so I'm going to have to find these settings. Here we go. So those all are correct. And stop pull-ups is correct. These are false, all these are false, so that's good. Now we're down to the movement settings. Now, the user's gonna have to go ahead and properly change the steps per unit. Well, wait a minute, let me, let me see if I can find the repo for the Neo, and we'll see if we can go ahead and configure this appropriately. So give me one second. Now, I'm not seeing a sample configuration for the Ender 3 Neo, but I do find one for the Ender 3 V2 Neo. So I'm hoping they're close enough where I can deal with that. So I'm gonna just scroll down here and what I really wanna see is how the motion is set up. 
because in theory, I should be able to use the steps that are here and also the temperature setting. So let me just scroll down through here and look at this. So it's still set at one and one. So that's good. Everything else looks pretty dang good here. Let's all set it five. Well, there's one change we can make. So let's go back over here to our temperatures. And that way, I feel like I've set this up exactly. They're setting the uh, heater zero, min temp at zero. So let's go ahead and change that to zero. And then they're also the bed min temp is zero. So we're, we'll go ahead and hit that at zero as well. And that way we're, we're just sort of guaranteeing that everything's the same. Using 275, and I've noticed the uh, bed max temp is 120. So let's go ahead and change that over here in our copy of Marlin. So that's all the same. Let's just peek through this and just make sure K1 value is 0.95, okay. Now what we could do is, let's go ahead and do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy these uh, PID values over here into our, our copy. So it's sort of the same. And let's just look at the, scroll down to the bed temps. And we're gonna copy the PID, PID values for the bed over to our copy as well. And this is from the under 3V2. I believe they're using the same beds. But again, the user's gonna to have to go ahead and do the PID tuning anyway. So let's go to the thermal protection again. Okay, they're using all the defaults, that's good. So now let's scroll down here and we're gonna to go to motion again. Now the other good thing is this sample is using a uh, CR touch, so I should not have to look anything up. All these are false, all ours are false, so that's good. This also has end stop interrupts feature, so we wanna go ahead and let's turn that on. So now the motion here, I'm just gonna copy the motion settings. So it looks like we're using the same extruder on both these printers. Now, most likely the E-steps are gonna to need to be configured as well. And I'll put a link to the site I use. So let's copy the max feed rates over. I wanna open a new window. So we've gone ahead and put that in. Now we want the default max accelerations. We need to change that copying that over and putting that into our file. Now the default accelerations down here are 500. So let's go ahead and make some changes here. 500. Next one is 500,000. Now they're defining classic jerk, so let's go ahead and do that. I happen to like classic jerk rather than the alternative. So we've gone ahead and turned on classic jerk, and we're verifying these are all the same. We want to turn on, we want to turn off Zmin probe. So let's put double slash and then let's turn on use probe for Z homing. And this is setting up the CR6. CR6, CR touch. I personally have a CR6, that's why I have that on my mind. Turn on BL touch. Okay, now my viewer didn't know the Z offset, so we're gonna take a chance here that the Z offset or that nozzle to probe offset is the same on the Ender 3 V2 Neo. So we'll take a chance there and just paste those values in. Some difference here, the probe rates. So let's change those to 50 times 60. Let's keep scrolling down. Like I said, I know this isn't the most exciting video in the world. What I'm trying to do is just get all this configured appropriately. So we want to change the Z probe offset range from negative 20 to negative 10. And positive 10 here. So that way, again, we're, we're matching what's on that existing board. So now this is on the inverts here. It's false, false, true. So we're gonna change that in our copy to false and then true. And this should be setting up for the 
see our touch, make sure our, everything's moving appropriately. Home direction's all appropriate, but the bed size here isn't right. So we need to look, it's 220 by 250. So let's go ahead and change this. Now I'm willing to bet it's 235 rather than 220. So we're, we're gonna go ahead and go with my gut instinct here and go with 235. So this, will, this will actually give him a little bit more space. And that's at 250. So all these values appear to be correct. Now, as I mentioned previously, I'm gonna wind up running through here one more time when I configure the, configure the screen, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I, worst case, I'm going through here twice. Bed level, bilinear. Okay, so I'm looking through this. Manual probe start C. There it is, point two. And then it's enable fade height, that's good. Segment level moves. Those all look correct. Now this is grid max points X3. Change this to three here as well. I don't think this is activated, but we'll have to try to see if that's in an if statement. I guess not. So now we're extrapolate beyond grid. So we need to extrapolate beyond grid. Sorry, like I said, it's hard for me to have to read through all this. Yeah, so now we're gonna go down to the mesh section. I'm gonna turn on LCD bed leveling. I think that needs to be on. I'm just gonna leave that as is. And again, we're probably gonna wind up having to come back through this anyway. But I'm gonna get the printer all set up for the board first. So we want Z safe homing on. And let's go ahead and copy Z safe homing X point here. Stood over here. So we have exactly the same code. Eight numbers, they all look the same. Validate end stops. Looks like we're good. We want to go ahead and turn on EEPROM settings to take advantage of that feature. And we want this on chit chat. We want to let's turn both these features on. Keep alive is on. Segment two, busy while heating. So on. I'm going to use my um, values I use here, and the user will be able to change these later. But I do 205. 65. We're going to do leave the uh, chamber alone. I'm going to leave numbers as is for ABS. Wait a minute, let's make this PETG because most users do PETG. So I'll do PETG. I do 235. I do about 70. Let's do 70. And that way, again, it, it sort of He's using the same features. Nozzle park feature. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. I just want to turn that on. Let's just go over to um, Big Tree Tech um, GitHub for this board. And let's scroll down to about 2244. Let's just do a find. Yeah, so they, they have park on. So we're just going to go ahead and, and turn park on there. So now what I'm doing is I'm actually looking at two different uh, Git re GitHub repos and print job timer auto start. Now we're going to do LCD. Now I'm going to go ahead and switch over to GitHub because I believe uh, Big Tree Tech because I believe they'll actually be set up for their own screen rather than the default. Define SD support. So we want that turned on. So let's go ahead and define speaker. That way it beeps. Well, that's a little annoying. We're just going to roll with it. And I'm going to turn these two features on. Let's do 20 and 1000. Again, to match the big tree tech. And what we're going to do is we need the riprap discount control, or I already know what I need here. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn that on. And let me switch back over to the. Um, Creality, and I'm pretty sure we're going to be able to scroll down here. Pretty much everything else should be good to go. Scroll down and make sure the Creality screen is not turned on. And that's about uh, 3,195. So I'm going to, and make sure, yep, it's not turned on. So that's good. Now, let's go down to Extra Features. 
And I'm going to look over at the Big Tree Tech because I think we have the fans are going to be power controlled. So we want to go ahead and make sure those are correct. Otherwise, the fans won't work appropriately. So let me look at the extra features here. And so we have soft power scale zero. Neopixel LEDs where we don't have those as far as we know. And that's the bottom. So now what I'm going to do is save this file. So I'm going to save configuration.h. Now, let's go ahead and switch over to our uh, configuration underscore advanced.h. Now, I'm working with the configuration.h. I'm going to mostly work out of the Big Tree Tech uh, GitHub repository. So I have uh, configuration underscore advanced.h open. Now, what I'm basically going to do is just scroll through. For the most part, I know I can skip a whole lot here. So I'm going to scroll down and where I want to start looking, let's look at thermal protection just to make sure we have everything there configured correctly. 40 and 4, so that looks all right. The Big Tree Tech has it as the watch temp period is 22. This may be a little aggressive, but I think we're going to go ahead and set it. And then let's keep looking at these thermal projections. Now we're at auto temp. So we just want to look at these compare values. So I'm just trying to keep these in sync. So as I'm looking at everything, I can just make sure the values all look sort of the same. It's a little tedious. So we want to use a controller fan. So we do want to turn that on. And let's make sure that our things here match. And speed 0, 255, 0, 060. That should be all right. Controller fan editable, we want that enabled. Just checking the fan values here. Now we need to change this. I don't exactly know where he has the fan plugged in, but I'm going to take a chance that he has this, and this is probably the appropriate fan port. But we're just going to take a chance. If it doesn't work, you can get back to me and take a picture of his board, and I can take a look and see if I can figure out which how he has it plugged in. So now, as everybody can see, I'm just slowly but surely scrolling through these files, making sure that everything is matching up. Now I want to look, looking for this value here. I want to look at these bump values. Let's go ahead and, I think this for sensorless homing and machine shouldn't have sensorless homing set up should still be optical but we're going to go ahead and just fix those values again so everything matches i don't think we need to change anything here the bl touch i'm not going to turn on uh, c stepper auto align mainly because i believe these are both running off the same motor so that won't matter that feature won't be available. I can go ahead and turn on input shaping. And I don't think I'm going to. I'm just going to leave that as is. Mainly because I, I'm not, I, I believe this is a relatively new user. So I don't want to turn on that advanced feature and then not have it configured right and all that good stuff. So we'll just leave that off for right now. I'm also not exactly sure how you go about configuring that. And I just don't want to, again, complicate this. There's no sense in making this more complicated than it needs to be. Now, I could probably do adaptive step smoothing, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'll leave that off for right now. Micro stepping saw set up correctly. Just again, going through here real slow and just looking at all the values and making sure everything matches. Now, uh, LCD info menu, we want to. Enable that, screen 4000, that's okay. Status message scrolling, we want that enabled. That way, if long messages, he'll be able to see it on his, on his LCD. LCD set progress manually. Ah, oh, there it is, set progress manually. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna wind up getting an error here that I'll have to go back through and turn something on. All right, now we're gonna have to, so we're just going to 
turn that on. Now we're just going to make sure all these are, everything's looking good. We don't want to mess with power loss recovery. And this is using SD card sort alpha. So we'll go ahead and do that. Sort uses RAM. Let's go ahead and hit that to true. And we're just matching the sort cache names. I'm going to turn that to true. And these are just, we're matching the uh, values in the big tree tech. And we're going to do UTF file name support. So let's go ahead and enable that. We're going to enable a long file name, file host support, scroll long file names. Again, this, these are just usability features where that way um, when he's messing with his printer, he'll be able to scroll long names and it, they won't be cut off. I know on my slicer, I have it set up where it adds, it, it adds the name of the printer. It appends that to the front of the file name. And sometimes those names can get really long. Yeah, so we're just still scrolling down through here. SD connection is, this says LCD. We're going to change that. We're going to activate it. And so that way it matches over here. We want to enable baby stepping. To find baby stepping without homing. Baby stepping is always available. So double click. See baby stepping. We'll go ahead and enable that. So we're going to put the total baby stepping. We want that to show up on the display. Now we're going to go ahead and turn on linear advance. This will need to be configured as well. And we're going to turn on experimental S curve. And I probably need to find that, go back and turn that on. I'm going to define uh, linear advance debug, and I'm also going to do allow, allow e jerk uh, just in case. Now, I think this is going to pop file, and I'll have to figure out exactly what line I'm, I'm messing. So that Big Tree Tech is showing linear advance underscore k at zero. This is showing 0.22. I think I'm just going to leave this as 0.22 for right now. And this, again, is something the user will have to configure. So now, I'm going to go down here to ARC support, and I use our support, so we want to make sure that's turned on. It is. And all the values look appropriate. So let's keep going. In step per segment is six, so that's good. So now let's go down to the buffers. And I'm going to use some of my own values here. I'm going to do 64. 64. sixty-four. Text buffer I think needs to be 32. I'm going to change that to 32, and let's define the Rx buffer as 2048. I think I'll wind up changing these. We're looking at them again once we uh, switch over and I configure for the screen. I'm going to use the emergency parser. Now, I want to go ahead and turn on advanced OK. That should be helpful if he winds up using Octoprint advanced park feature, pause feature, I mean. Let's enable that. Now let's just look at these values, to make sure they're correct across the way. Um, so that's 62, 10, 25. Um, Big Tree Tech has 400, so we'll go ahead and do that. They're doing filament change load length is 350. So let's do it. Let's look at that filament load 350. So we need filament. Film and change fast load length. Sorry, it took me a minute to see that. It would help if we were using the same version. They're not using the same version of Marwin as I am. So now we want park head on pause, uh, home before film and change. Film and load unload G codes. So that's set up. Now we're going down into the TMC drivers. Hold multiplier 0.5, interpolate true. So, I'm sorry. So, Creality has it set as X is 800, so this is going to use the defaults, I bet. Y is 800, yeah. Is it using for Z is 800. 
And let's look here. So what is Creality? Creality has 800 for the stepper, to, for the uh, extruder. So we'll go ahead and go with that. Self chop and E. I'm going to go ahead and turn off self chop for the extruder. I always do that. And this should be, the chopper timing should be 24. Change that over in ours and just compare these numbers. See hybrid threshold. It's 20. Let's see what Creality has to set to. We're just going to leave it at the default. For the heck of it, let's go ahead and we'll just make things look the same. So we'll improve homing reliability. We'll use their values of 72. We're not actually using it, but I might as well just configure this to match exactly what Big Tree Tech has. Okay. So TMC debugging, let's go ahead and turn that on. Or we can get some codes if there's a problem. So now we're just scrolling down the report position. That'll show up on the LCD. Auto report capabilities, that's okay. 14 details, so we want that. Report fan change, we want that turned on. Host action commands needs to be activated. In some cases, what I'll wind up doing is, and then we're going to do host pause M76. So we need to turn that on. Host prompt support, let's turn that on. I'm going to turn on meat pack. So, and G code case insensitive, let's go ahead and turn that on. Let's go ahead and save this. Okay, so I've now made all my configuration changes. So now we're going to go to auto build Marlin. And I've hit auto build Marlin and it's already popped an error. So let's look down here and see if we can tell what the problem is. So I'm back over here in the Big Tree Tech repo. And let me go over here to the screen. What I need to do is make sure that the CR10 stock display is enabled. So we're going to go into configuration.h. We're going to enable CR10 stock display and then make sure everything else, including that um, RipRap discount full graphics smart controller, make sure that's turned off as well. Okay, so we, once we have that turned off, what I'm going to do is go over to Auto Build Marlin, make the bottom here bigger. I'm going to go ahead and hit Build. And I know we're going to have some additional errors here. But we'll sit here and what we'll do is we'll go through and correct those together. So this will take a minute. So let me pause and we'll come back. Okay, now we have the errors here. And if you look, it's talking about requires controller fan pin. And this is over in configuration underscore advanced dot H. So we don't have that correct. So let's go to configuration underscore dot H. Here's the controller fan pin and that's disabled. Let's go over to Big Tree Tech. And let's go ahead and select the configuration underscore advanced. And let's do it. And so I need to copy this line. So let's copy that line. And we're just going to paste it right here. So let's go ahead and hit save. Let's go back over here. We're going to hit clean. So that'll clean up all our, our install files. Let's hit build again. Now we'll probably have more errors, but we can go through these one at a time and fix them. Now this is showing green, so it's compiled correctly. Let's go ahead. I just want to check a setting here. So I want to type in curve. And let's look, and we're going to look for S-curve. I want to go ahead and define S-curve acceleration. So let's go ahead and turn that on. Hit save. We'll recompile here in a minute. So we have the basic setup. And just to test things, let's just be thorough here. Let's hit clean. And then we'll build. Just to, again, make sure everything works correctly. Now we're going to have a couple warnings here at the bottom, but that's okay. Warnings aren't that big a deal. What matters is do we have um, any errors? Right now, as you can see, I'm getting some warnings. And that's okay. I don't particularly care about that. 
because the firmware should still work. This looks like it ran appropriately. It's in green, and it's probably going to open up a Finder or a uh, Explorer window. And there's the firmware right there, the .bin file. Let's go ahead, and now we know this works. I'm going to go ahead and commit everything, and then work on the screen. So let's go ahead, and we're going to type git add dot, and then we're going to do git commit minus a minus m and let's say firmware compiles and end single quotation and let's do git push now what i try to do is whenever i push anything i'm pushing working code okay so we've gone ahead and uploaded that and let me minimize this a little bit and we'll go ahead through and make some changes. Now over here on the right hand side, I have the GitHub repository open for the screen. And what we're going to do is just go through here and make sure everything is turned on. Now, unfortunately, this has everything mixed in together. So I'll probably have to go back and forth, but let's just deal with this. You prompt settings already turned on but let's check it anyway so i'm going to hit Control f on my keyboard bring up the find you promise set let me go through here and see if i can pick out the configuration stuff sd support i know i turned that on but let's check it anyway sd support now i'm looking for any configuration changes Nozzle park feature, I turned that on, but again, let's check everything. Nozzle park, repeatability tests, we do want that. So let's go ahead and turn that on. Mesh validation, let's turn that on. That looks like everything for configuration.h. So now let's save this and go over to configuration underscore advanced. And let's start all the way at the top. There's a bunch here we need to check. AB stepping is on. Auto report temperatures is on, but again, I'm going to check everything for position. M115 for geometry report. So let's turn that on. M114 detail is on. Port fan change is on. Let's go down to SD card. Now, the second thing I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and optimize this for. I'll go ahead and optimize this for um, Octoprint as well. Just so I'm doing all my best practices. So now, long file name should be enabled. Long file name is enabled. Auto report SD status should be enabled. It's on board, we already know that. Let's do serial flip precision. So we need to enable that. And these are just, this is just optimizing this step here. And you don't need to do this if you're not using the big tree tech screen. What I'm trying to do is just optimize everything. So all the functions on the screen are available. Host prompt support's enabled. Host status notifications needs to be enabled. We've already enabled these three. Z stepper auto align, we can't use that because we only have one stepper for both Z. So we'll leave that as is. So now what I'm going to do is save this. So I'm saving changes I just made for the screen. Let's run a clean, and then we'll run a build. I'm also going to turn off silent build, because I'd rather see everything. OK, yeah, that's what I'm more used to that. So that must be a new feature. And what I'm doing is I, I'm going to make sure I get all this one step at a time. So while this is compiling, 
let me switch over and get to my optimizations for Octoprint. Okay, we can see over here on the left, our firmware is compiled successfully. So now on the right-hand side screen, I have a list of recommended features for Octoprint. I'll go ahead and configure these um, so that way my user will just have it everything set up appropriately and it won't hurt they shouldn't hurt anything to have these set up so there's only two things here in configuration that age speaker and nozzle park we've already done those so we're not going to worry about um worry about those so now we'll go over to configuration underscore advanced this tutorial recommends the sound menu i'm not really i'm ambivalent towards this but let's go over here and do our find and so let's go ahead and define the sound menu so this is set progress manually the lcd and we'll we're not finding it so worry about that so now we have show remaining time show remaining time is already enabled and then we have s set use m73 for remaining time let's see do i see that right here of course not so let's go ahead select that and see if we can find that and that may no longer be available but that's okay so we have rotate progress display i'll find in that lcd progress bar let's enable that That may not actually even work. That's okay. Arc supports enabled. Now we're going to change these buffers. Get these all correct. And this all can maximize. So 64, 64, 64. Then we want a buff size 32. So let's change that. This again. Um, optimizes how data is transferred. 248, as I guessed right earlier. Emergency parsers on. Advanced OK is already on. Advanced pause feature is already on. Mark on pause. I believe probe, to, probe, I'm sorry. Prompt, host prompt support should be on. So let's go ahead and just check that. Yeah, that's on. Auto report temperature is on. Auto report um, positions on. Let's do M14 real time. I don't believe I enabled that earlier. Like I said, these are all just recommended things for um, Octoprint, and it's not going to hurt to turn them on. So now, extended capabilities report. It's already enabled. Report fan change is enabled. Meat pack is on. G code insensitive is on. Post action commands, I believe we already enabled this, but let's check anyway. It's enabled. And host prompt support was enabled. And we also have define host start menu item. There we go. And so that should be literally all the changes we need to make to optimize for Octoprint. So let's go ahead and compile again. So let's run a clean. And then I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Let's run a build. Now, once this is complete, if it works totally, we should be able to the firmware.bin to an SD card, put it in the printer, turn the printer, shut the printer off, turn it on, and after a minute or two, it should flash. Now, from the look of this, we're, we're looking really good. Everything appears to be working. Then we got some warnings about jumpers, but that all has to do with sensorless homing, which we're not using. Now, again, the user that asked me to put this together may need sensorless homing, but I don't think so. 
Now, the big thing that should need to be done is once this is flashed, I need to be configured. Now, I tend to use the uh, Teaching Tech uh, printer calibration site. That's what I would recommend. And that should have all the PID tuning, all the uh, E-step tuning that should be needed. So here's our bin file. So we're good to go. Now, while we're sitting here, I'm going to go ahead and go over our Marlin folder. Let's go ahead and create a new folder. And I'm just going to call this folder release. And let's go ahead and copy our bin file. So I'm going to copy that. Go over to my code folder, Marlin. There's that release folder. And I'm going to paste that in. Now, that user, user should be able to uh, grab this release file. So we're going to make one last step here. We're going to check git status. And this should show the file we need to add as well as all the changes. So that looks OK. So now let's do, well, let's check the release folder just to make sure we have something in there. Yeah. So let's do uh, git add period. That'll add everything. Now we're going to do git commit minus a minus m single quote least firmware end quote. Now let's do git push, and that should upload. I had to go ahead and change the name of my folder to uh, m3dp-release. I think release is um, in my git ignore, so it was literally ignoring that file. So if I go back over here, open up a new terminal window, and so I'm going to type git status, and we'll see, we can see down in the bottom here, this file needs to be added. So we're going to do git add period git commit minus a minus m added release. And let's do git push. And if we look over here to our GitHub repository, There's the M3P release, and the bin file can be downloaded and installed. I realize this is not realize this is not the most exciting video I've done. Um, it's sort of dry, and it's it's can be tough to follow along with. But the reason why I'm putting this together is the number of people keep asking, needing help with firmware, or need um, file firmware compiled for them. I thought it might be helpful to, to put together a little tutorial. Um, that I can send people. So, and again, I, I, I realize it's a dry subject, but if you have any questions, please post them down in the comments. I appreciate your time tonight. This is Mike from Minimal3DP. Again, appreciate your time. If you have any questions, post them below. If you like what I'm doing, subscribe or give me a like. If you have any ideas, I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks. Have a good night.